Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Uh, we have another exciting conversation with our really good friend, uh, more than just our doctor resource, Dr. Liz Lister. How are you doing, Dr. Liz? Well, thank you, Art. How are you doing? Great. Thank you. Dr. Liz, you you look terrific. And I you. wanted to just compliment you because you seem to have a perfect weight for yourself. And, and I recently started uh, what they call it intermittent fasting. And the idea is, of course, is you fast for 18 hours or something like that, and your body starts burning fat. And it, it seems to help. It helps me in other ways. But the idea of fasting really is a really an ancient tradition, isn't it? Exactly. Is it good for you? That, that I guess what I'm getting at is fasting a good thing or not? Turns out it is. It is. Fasting occasionally, modified type of fasting. You know, full fasting, of course, is is not taking in anything at all which I don't generally recommend. I would say at least water or herbal tea as part of a complete fast day. Although again, as you mentioned, there's a lot of different cultural and religious traditions that have days of complete and total fasting, right? So lots of ways, and you also mentioned intermittent fasting, which can be different types of hour intervals. If people wanna start that, they can do just 12 hours of fasting and then eat everything that they eat during the day in a 12 hour period. And then they can start to shift it over to shrink the number of hours down to the, the most that I've heard of is eight hours of eating and 16 hours of fasting. That's the most typical that I've heard of. But the answer to your question is absolutely. It turns out that reducing calories on purpose has quite a few health benefits. Just as a, as a note, because uh, John and I actually had uh, private discussions about this, and uh, from time to time, uh, I know we've both been on intermittent fasting, but really uh, the uh, nice thing about it is that if you, uh, let's say, start, uh, you don't need anything after 8 o'clock at night, uh, you get the whole night in there, so you get maybe an hour or two awake, you get the whole night, that's like 8 to 10 hours of the 16 hours, uh, and then it's just, you know, uh, can you make it <laughs> for another six hours? And I find I, I'm very successful with it when I drink a lot of water, as they uh, it suggested you do during that fasting period. Where I fall off yeah. the, the fast is when I, I, I figured, oh, gee, I've lost eight, 10 pounds. And this is really great. I feel wonderful. And then I stop drinking the water and I'll have a little snack. And then it's just like it comes back with a vengeance uh, of fasting. Are right. you kidding? Look what you've been wait, missing all this time. So, but is yeah, is, but it's fasting uh, in general. Forgetting about just the intermittent fasting, what are the benefits? And can you do it forever? I mean, is it a lifestyle you can adapt uh, adopt for yourself? That's a really interesting question. I would say yes, with, depending on how you define the fasting. Okay, so complete fasting, no, that's not a lifestyle. We have to be, we have to eat, we have to take in nutrients. Uh, this type of fasting or reducing calories has all kinds of health benefits, including it improves, it lowers insulin resistance, so that improves improves blood sugar. It lowers inflammation which both of these contribute to better heart health. It increases brain function. A lot of people, and I wonder, uh, I'd love to hear from each of you for when, when you've done this, do you feel, you know, when people go into a fat burning state from reducing their calories enough, it usually gives you really nice mental clarity and energy and deeper sleep. It really has a lot of benefits, probably related to the fact that it boosts metabolism when you do it correctly. If you don't eat at all, eventually your metabolism will slow down in order to adapt and keep you alive. So you have to rotate it to some degree with some healthy eating as well. Uh, healthy eating means nutritious eating. Yes. Uh, and, and not and just yeah, I was I was thinking of of how one breaks the fast, uh, uh, the Ramadan, mm -hmm. the 
Muslim culture, for instance, they fast all day long and at sunset, uh, it's common trigger time, at sunset they'll have a meal to break the fast. And, exactly, uh, yeah. And, and that, and it's a special kind of meal. And of course, all the religions that I know of uh, have some kind of fasting sometime or other. And they also have that tradition of breaking the fast, um, the eating part of it. Yes, and and I am a fan of breaking fast, which is also known as breakfast. Yes. I am a <laughs> breakfast believer. There are people who say skip breakfast, eat breakfast. I am more on the side on the on the camp of in favor of breakfast. Now I do understand that some people get great effects from the intermittent fasting which we were just talking about where they will fast, like you said, about you're done eating by, say, let's say 7 p.m. That makes the math kind of easy. And then by the morning, you can wake up and have a cup of tea, like a herbal tea, or and, and also drinking a lot of water. And then you're waiting till about 11 a.m. until you break your fast. So you're absolutely right. It's very important. I am a fan. Yeah, well, that's, uh, and, of course, nutritious, yeah. That's of course. Uh, that's the way I used to do it. I'd stop by by seven, maybe after seven, have nothing other than water, um, uh, and then uh, uh, I'd go by seven a.m. That's twelve, and then I only need another what four or five. So by noon, one o'clock, uh, I'm ready to go again. And sometimes it was really more like uh, 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 thirteen hours uh, uh, fasting, and then a five-hour window. And in that five-hour window, um, maybe a part of it is that uh, all the things that I followed had nothing really to do with a particular diet. Whatever you do, just eat in that window. And obviously, you want to stay away from uh, sweets and desserts and things like that. Um, right. But uh, my my bane was uh, getting about a week and a half in. It always has been with that one. And uh, I have because I have enough extra weight. Uh, it come and I'm a guy. It comes off very quickly, so it's like you could lose 10, yes. 11, 12 pounds. Obviously, some of it's water weight, uh, but it, it comes off. You sleep better because you have, in my case, I think less weight pressing on your organs uh, and things like that. Uh, but uh, staying on it, uh, I, I like to know more, though, about rather than get hung up on intermittent fasting, which is not really what triggered this conversation, would be the benefits of fasting in general. And right. uh, some of the some of their uh, uh, ultra low calorie fasting yes. that people keep up for years. So maybe we can get back to the general subject and why it's it could very well be a safe way uh, for lifestyle. Yes, absolutely. And so I want to remember to talk about longevity and the fact that lower calorie intake appears to turn on a longevity gene that's definitely been shown in animal studies. I want to make a quick comment about men versus women. This type of lowering your calories definitely has a different effect on women and men. You just mentioned losing 11, 12 pounds in a short period of time. Women would kill for that. <laughs> okay. Men, it definitely, that definitely is a result that happens more for men than for women. So we see different results. So that's important to, to keep an eye out. Generally speaking, however, for women and men, it does appear that lowering our calorie intake, you know, th that it helps with health and longevity. As we were talking about less inflammation, boosted metabolism overall, increased growth hormone production, very important. Growth hormone helps teenagers grow, but it also, after we're done growing, it helps with cell repair. And that's very important. So lots and lots of health benefits with lowering, like you said, I think you said ultra low calorie eating as a lifestyle that happens uh, in certain areas of the world called blue zones, which I love reading about. And uh, we'll hopefully get to talk about that another time. However, this is an er areas of the world where people routinely live to over 100 years old in good health and good mental shape. And one of the features of the blue zones is that they don't eat a lot. Hmm. You know, uh, 
you mentioned uh, nutrition earlier, fasting, but having keeping good nutrition. Um, yeah. And I think the, the key to fasting is not, based on our discussion, is not just not eating, but it's when you eat, eat a little less, balance your diet out. In other words, you can't do what I do, which is starve yourself for 18 hours and then gorge yourself with uh, corned beef sandwiches. You know, that, well, wait, that's John, right. John, maybe that's our problem. We're not doing an intermittent fast when we do it. We're doing an intermittent starve. And <laughs> maybe that's right. We ought to change our that's minds. Right. Maybe if we just change yeah. our mindset a bit. That's actually what I call the sumo wrestler diet. The way sumo wrestlers purposely put on weight is they go, they usually will have one maximum two meals during the day and they're humongous meals. And then they're purposely starving their bodies the rest of the time because they know that that is going to cause them to put on weight. So when people don't eat enough healthy, moderate, sized meals, the body goes into a starvation mode. And then when you do put calories in, straight into storage. So we don't want that. No, we don't. Right. So so uh, actually, I think this uh, uh, subject is so broad. Uh, I would love for us to have another conversation another day about these blue zones. I had heard a little about it and, and some groups within the U.S., uh, particularly among seniors, uh, who are getting, uh, uh, it, it, it just seems, how could you survive on three, four, five hundred 500 calories a day? I don't know what the exact amounts are that they talk about, but uh, they're living longer and with less uh, medical conditions. So I, I, I think I'm we should have- i forward a, to that yeah, conversation. We should have other conversations about um, these things, but uh, what a great eye opener. Thank you. Thank you for uh, getting You're us welcome. on a path to understanding what our body needs and doesn't need is, and, and uh, maybe taking away some of the mythology around fasting is, is not just a, a once a year kind of thing or a once in a while, but it could be a lifestyle. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.